In this video, we're going to look at another one of those properties on the parent flex container element. And that property is called flex wrap. So let's see what it does. So if you've come into this video from the last one where we discuss justify content, you can see I've made a few changes here in my HTML and CSS. Previously, we just had three child divs, these three. And as you can see, I've added seven more to make 10 total child divs. So we have this outer parent container div and we have 10 child item divs. And then in the CSS, I've reduced the height of the parent container to 100 pixels. I've given the child item elements a height of 100 pixels. And I've also given each one of them a width of 10%. Now, one thing I want to point out before we actually start talking about flex wrap is that if we actually comment out the height on a child item, so here I'm going to comment out this 100 pixel height for the child, and then I'm going to save and check out how there's been no change here in the browser. And that's because by default, a flex item is set to stretch. So for example, if I change the height of the parent containing element, let's say I make it 300 pixels. Now I saved and you can see that they still stretch to fill the entire height of 300 pixels. Oh, snap. Let's set that container element back to 100 pixels. And now we can just get rid of this height of 100 pixels for the children altogether. So now onto flex wrap. Now in this case, I have 10 child item divs and their widths are set to 10%. So as you can see, they each fit perfectly into this row. But let's say I really bumped up that width on the child items. What if I gave each one a width of 50%? Well, let's see what happens. Notice that when I saved, nothing happened. And that's because by default, Flexbox sets its flex wrap property to a value of no wrap. So if I came into my CSS and I said flex wrap and gave it a value of no wrap, and then I saved, again, we would see exactly the same thing. So in this case, no matter what width I give to a child item, Flexbox is simply not gonna budge. It's not gonna wrap its child items onto a new line. Let's actually come into our parent container element and let's give it a border. Let's give it a really big obvious border of 10 pixels solid red, just so we can really see that container. So let's try something out here. Let's try reducing the width of that container element from 800 pixels to 200 pixels. And let's save and check out what's happened here. By default, since flex wrap is set to no wrap, when the parent containing element gets too small to contain its child items, they simply overflow the container, as you can see here. So unless we tell Flexbox to wrap, it's simply not gonna do so. So let's see how we can get these child items to wrap. Let's set our width back to 800 pixels. Let's comment out that obnoxious red border for now. And as I said before, we've given each child item a width of 50%. So if now we come into our flex wrap property and give it a value of wrap and we save, we can see that Flexbox has wrapped the child items now onto new lines. We told Flexbox that we want each child item to have 50% of the width. So then we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two on a line. Let's say we gave each one of those child items a value of 33%. Well, now we see that Flexbox has put three child items on a line before it wraps. I want to point out something to you now about how Justify Content works with Flex Wrap. And to demonstrate this, instead of giving each child item a width of 50%, let's give each one a width of 300 pixels. Now you can see that each row still has two child items, but also has a little bit of space remaining. And that's because we've set flex wrap to wrap on the parent container. And since the total width of the container is 800 pixels, Flexbox isn't able to put three child items on a line because that would be 900 pixels. But this extra space is going to allow us to show something about justify content. So let's come into our parent container element and let's give it a justify content property and let's set that to center. Now let's save. And what I want you to notice is that when you use justify content and you have flex wrap set to wrap, that justify content value is going to apply to each line separately. So each line is centered. As another example, let's set justify content to space between. And let's save. And now maybe it's a little bit clearer what I'm talking about. So justify content is just concerned with each line sort of as its own thing. 
And now we're going to look at the final value that you can set for flex wrap, and that's called wrap reverse. So in order to demonstrate this one, I think it would be good to actually simplify what we have going on here a little bit. Instead of 10 elements, let's just make four. So we'll delete six of them. And now you can see we have one, two, three, four. Instead of a width of 300 pixels, let's go back to that width of 50%. And flex wrap is still set to wrap. So as you can see, we have one, two on the top, and then three and four on the bottom. And also to start with, I'm going to get rid of this flex wrap wrap and justify content space between here. I'm just going to get rid of those. And what we can see is that even though each has that width of 50%, they're all still on one line because as we said, flex wrap is set to no wrap by default. So normally, as we saw before, if we did set flex wrap to wrap, this three box and four box would wrap down to the next line. But with wrap reverse, actually what's going to happen is that three and four here are gonna wrap up to the preceding line. So let's try it. Let's say flex wrap, and let's do wrap reverse. And let's save. And here you can see, as I just said, we have one, two, and three and four have now wrapped up to the preceding line. So of course, as you know by now, in Flexbox, we have a main axis, and then we have a cross axis. And here we've been dealing with a main axis as a row. But of course, you could set flex direction to column and have that be your main axis. And if your child items overflowed that column and you use flex wrap, your items would wrap into new columns. So flex wrap will work with whatever your main axis is, whether it's a row or a column. And I encourage you to experiment with that.